Happy Sunday, sports fans, and welcome to another episode of the Buffoon Sports Talk. I'm Jake, your host for the Sunday Rundown, where we break down and analyze the matchups in the NFL for that week. And today is November 17th, and we are in week 11 of the regular season and we are inching closer to the playoffs here we got some really good matchups this week because a lot of teams are really starting to create that separation from others as far as making that playoff push uh, some teams are starting to get into that area where it's going to become mathematically impossible to make it and we got a, got a lot of good teams playing each other this week and uh, matchups that i'm excited to get into and break down so uh, you know, hopefully, um, you know, if you're, just, we're really trying to build this podcast here and the Sunday rundown is the, the segment that I love the most here, as far as, um, what I'd love to be able to own and do love football, love talking it. Uh, but, um, if you know, if you're tuning in for the first time here, hopefully you didn't hear week 10, uh, because I did an awful job. I got half the games wrong and, uh, you know, I, I was pretty good so far through nine weeks, you know, I had gotten, about 80%, 80, 83% of the games total that I've predicted right, which I'd say is pretty good, you know, and I've been betting on those games. So, uh, but last week did not do a good job. Uh, a lot of tough matchups, but boy, I, I looked kind of foolish. So, uh, anyways, we'll just jump right into it and hopefully this will be a better week. So the first game I want to break down is Pittsburgh and Cleveland. Um, I did predict that game, right? I had Cleveland winning, uh, I thought it was a big home game. They were coming off some big, uh, you know, a couple good wins against the the Bills. And I just thought that right now Pittsburgh with a uh, rookie quarterback and Mason Rudolph was going to be a little inconsistent. I'm not going to get into any of the drama that went down in the last uh, minute of the game. I think that that's something I'd like to leave for the uh, four of us, like the four buffoons the next time that we're all together here. So, um, but anyways... Uh, I think that that was a uh, big loss there for Pittsburgh. You know, they had won quite a few games in a row. They were looking like they were going to be able to make this playoff push, and they still could. But in the AFC, I think it comes down to the Bills, Colts, Raiders, and Pittsburgh as far as uh, playoff contention there. And I think that that was a game when, looking back, they're going to wish they had won on the road. Uh, so... We'll go ahead and move on to probably the worst game of the uh, NFL this week, which is the Jets at the Redskins. Always a tough matchup to predict when you've got two bad teams playing each other. The Redskins are playing at home, um, and so you would think that's really the, one of their only opportunities if they're going to win some games this season is to play another bad team at home. Um, and I think they really need to play hard and reevaluate some of their ideas because if they're if they were planning on tanking to try to get the first overall pick and snag a quarterback in Tua from Alabama, they are going to really need to reconsider there because <laughs> uh, hopefully he turns out to be all right, and I wish him a speedy recovery, and I hope I get to see him play in the NFL. But Tua took a nasty shot yesterday, um, had a really problem, big problem with his hip, and he's going to be out uh, for the rest of the season, and this could possibly even be career-ending. But either way, he's definitely not going to be the first overall pick or probably playing in the NFL next season. Um, and I think that the Redskins need to, you know, the Redskins, the Dolphins, the Bengals, any team that was looking like they were going to be that first overall pick, I think they really need to reconsider some things, especially if they have guys uh, playing for their job because uh, they're not getting a quarterback next year. So, But I think uh, the Redskins, ultimately, their offense is one of the worst. Their defense is one of the worst in the NFL. They don't have much going for them at all. They have no good quarterback. Uh, their coach was fired this year. There's a lot of instability. And when I look at matchups, you know, one of the five key – you know, there are five key things that I look for. The first being the quarterbacks, the second being the head coach, uh, the third being who wins on the line of scrimmage, you know, which team is better on the offensive line and defensive line. Uh, the fourth being, you know, which team is, is better at running the football and uh, if they can stop the run on defense. And number five, um, what, which team is playing at home. And I think when you look at those five things, you know, the Jets have a good young quarterback in Sam Darnold that they like. Um, you know, he's young. He's made a lot of mistakes this season, but I do think he's a young quarterback. He's the youngest of that draft class last season. Uh, so there's still plenty of time for him to make some big leaps here. And I think playing the Redskins will be a win uh, for them. And so I've, I've got the Jets in this game. Uh, I think this is a game Sam Darnold really needs to come out and do well and prove things. Uh, but they've got weapons. You know, they got Robbie Anderson. They got Le'Veon Bell. So they got a lot more going for them than the Redskins, in my opinion. Uh, so next up, we'll move to the uh, New Orleans Saints and the Tampa Bay Bucks. Uh, you know, this is uh, the third game since the Drew Brees has been back since his injury. Uh, he didn't look too great against the Arizona Cardinals in his first game. And last week, they lost to the Atlanta Falcons, who were 1-8. And, and I think that 
that is a game that they're going to wish that they had back as far as, you know, when, when they look back at the uh, end of the season um, or at the playoffs, I mean, when they look back at the regular season, uh, as far as that the seeding goes, because the NFC is really stacked right now between the 49ers, the Packers, the uh, the Saints. You know, there are a lot of teams right now playing for that, uh, you know, the Seahawks playing for that that number one seed. Um, so that's a loss that they couldn't afford against a, a bad team in, in Atlanta. And I think that this is a huge game right now for Drew Brees. He's going to have to come out and prove something, which I think he will. Um, because if not, I think there's going to be a lot of people and a lot of chatter around the nation. And I've been saying this for a few weeks, but a lot of chatter around whether or not the Saints made the right decision in bringing Drew Brees back or rolling with the hot hand in Teddy Bridgewater. Uh, because Teddy Bridgewater could do some things that Drew Brees couldn't as far as rolling out of the pocket, as far as his mobility, which buys a lot of extra time for Michael Thomas and whatnot. Uh, helps Alvin Kamara in the run game because you have to be able to defend two different rushing threats there. Um, and, 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 you know, and you can't just commit as much to, to the run on Kamara. And uh, right now, I think that, uh, Drew, you know, Drew Brees' arm hasn't looked as strong. Some of the balls are falling short. His accuracy is definitely still there, especially on those intermediate and short throws. But um, we'll, we'll see here. I think they're, But I think he'll, he'll come out dominating. I think he's got the weapons in Alvin Kamara and Michael Thomas. Uh, Michael Thomas is just catching everything this year. He's a machine. He's on pace to break Marvin Harrison's single season record. And I think when you look at their defense, the Saints have a great defense. And the Bucks, their offense, they turn the ball over quite a bit. Uh, that's just something that Jameis Winston has done a ton. And if you do that to the Saints too much, you're gonna you're not gonna win this game. And I think they got the better quarterback, better coaching. Even though I love Bruce Arians, got the better coach in Sean Payton, uh, the better run game, and uh, I think the better offensive and defensive lines here. Um, Next up, we've got, uh, so I've got the Saints in that. Next up, we've got the uh, Denver Broncos at the Minnesota Vikings. Uh, I've got the Minnesota Vikings in this one. Uh, the Denver Broncos' really only chance here is to be able to stop the run, or if Minnesota just does something absolutely stupid and comes out and just tries to throw all over Denver. Um, because Denver has a good pass rush, and they've got good corners. And like I've Von Miller, Chris Harris Jr., they, they got some... They got a good defense there as far as being able to stop the run. And especially without Adam Thielen, I think the the Vikings really need to move the ball through Dalvin Cook today. Um, and I think that if Denver can do a good job of stopping the run, I think you'll probably see them come out with like an eight-man box at first to really try to commit to that and try to force Kirk Cousins to have to throw. Uh, so we'll see what happens. Kirk Cousins has been good this year. I know a lot of people are down on him, but I think he's a good quarterback. Um so, but I think the the matchup here to check out is the is the offensive line for the the Vikings and to see if the Broncos can can stop it. So, uh, but I got Minnesota. Next up, we've got the Buffalo Bills at the Miami Dolphins, and you know Miami came off a win next week against the Colts, which you know I'll speak to in just a second here when we get to the Colts game. But I think you know Buffalo. I think they only got that game because Brian Hoyer was starting. But uh, Buffalo, you know they they've blown a. a game against the the Browns that I think that they wish that they would have had back um, and I think that they come out this week looking for a big road win against Miami it's always nice to get easy win, wins on the road especially when you're fighting for a playoff spot um, and so I think Buffalo wins this game uh, there's not a ton to get into here I think Miami's just an awful team altogether uh, you know they've been able to put a couple of things together with you know Ryan Fitzpatrick and their receivers with, you know, Devontae Parker, but they've had some injuries and uh, some unfortunate things happen as far as suspensions go and, and things like that. So, um, you know, I think, uh, but they try, they're trying. I mean, they're, they've got some fight in them and especially now that they know that they're not going to be able to go get Tua, I think they really need to reconsider starting Josh Rosen, uh, which I don't think would be good, uh, a, a good move today against the Buffalo defense as far as, um, for a win, but I think it might be good for Josh Rosen's development. So I, I don't know. There's a lot up in the air. But again, they're one of those teams that has to reconsider what they're doing. Uh, so next up, we've got the Jacksonville Jaguars at Indianapolis Colts. And uh, this is going to be an interesting game. This is a division game. It's in Indy. So I've got the Colts. Um, and I'm really hoping they win. They're my favorite team, obviously. Uh, but they do a good job of running the football and getting first downs, which is something you're going to have to be able to do against the Jags. Uh, because if you come out trying to throw on the Jags, they, they do have a good you know top 10 defense in the league, maybe top 10, top 12, I would say. But they, they've got a good pass rush, and they're good against the, uh, the pass. Um, and on top of that, 
you know, the Jags are good at running the football, so that's another key matchup to look for. So it'll be up to the linebackers and Anthony Walker and Darius Leonard to have to stop Leonard Fournette in the, in the rush today. But I think that if they can do a good job of doing that, it really sets them up for success because uh, Nick Foles is back today. He's taking the starting job since uh, hurting his collarbone in week one against the Chiefs. And I think that, uh, you know, that's an advantage for the Colts only because if you recall who the offensive coordinator was uh, when Nick Foles had success uh, with Doug Peterson and the Eagles, it was Frank Reich. And so uh, Frank Reich knows all of Nick Foles' tendencies, especially on tape and things to look for. And he knows his strengths and weaknesses. And he also knows how to be able to play towards those. So I think that that gives a little advantage towards the Colts. So if they can force, uh, if they can stop Leonard Fournette and force Nick Foles to have to throw a lot, I think they'll be able to do a good job there. Hopefully, especially, but you know the the weakness for the Colts is their secondary. Uh, they got some guys out, so we'll see. Uh, next up, we've got the Dallas Cowboys at the Detroit Lions. Um, and boy, I'm bummed about this. This is a game on paper that a few weeks ago looked amazing, um, but you know, losing their starting running back and quarterback right now, the Lions they're they're just plagued right now. Uh, so when you look at those matchups again, I think they've they've got the better head coach because I think. Garrett's an awful coach. I'll just be honest. They are playing at home, but uh, with no running game or no quarterback right now, I think the advantage goes to Dallas uh, because Matt Stafford is out another week, uh, which is a huge bummer because that always, you know, when you got Matt Stafford, I think uh, he's really underrated and he always keeps you in a lot of games. Um, and, and Johnson going out earlier this season, you know, you got to feel bad for the Lions, man. They always have, they always have bad things happen to them. Unfortunate things happen uh, that just slightly keep them out of there. Um, but I think the reality is they're weak against the run. And, and so when you give that O line for Dallas and you've got, you know, the running game with Zeke there, um, I think that that's just going to, that's just going to set you up for success the entire game. And the reality is, you know, the Lions might be decent in pass coverage with Slay and stuff, but they don't force any turnovers. They don't get any interceptions. And so if you're going to be able to allow the Cowboys to run the football all day and not force, you know, a ton of picks on Dak, uh, I think that sets Dak up for success. You know, I'm not super high on him, but I think that uh, a lot of things have to go right for him. But if you, but I think those are the right things, <laughs> right? So uh, anyways, uh, we'll move on to the Atlanta Falcons at the, uh, you know, Carolina Panthers. Another interesting game, division game. Uh, Falcons coming off a big win last week, so we'll see if we can keep that momentum going. Uh, but I just don't think it's going to happen because, again, they don't do a good job of getting to the quarterback. They don't have a good running game. Uh, which really helps Kyle Allen, you know, he's starting this year um, for the Panthers right now. You know, he, he this is the first time he's really getting lots of looks at NFL defenses, right? Uh, but if, you, if you're if you not able to get pressure on him and he's able to slow the game down, uh, it's, it really helps him. And, um, you know, Atlanta is one of the worst defenses in the NFL as well. And, you know, when you've got that as well, it's just going to set the, you know, they're not going to stop on the run. McCaffrey's going to run the ball all game, which is just going to set Kyle Allen up for success, especially at home when there's not a lot of noise or, or anything like that. So, and I think vice versa, when you look at the Panthers uh, on defense, um, they, they've got a good, got a good defense. You know, they, they've got a good pass rush. And if you're not going to be able to run the football against the Panthers, uh, which Luke Keekley will do a great job in stopping today, um, they're just going to be able to tee off all game long. And that, that Falcons O-line is weak. And I think Matt Ryan's going to take some shots today. So hopefully he stays healthy. Um, and losing Sanu hurts. It really does. Because that third weapon on offense would really help s spread the defense. And so now with Ridley and and uh, just Julio and Hooper, you know, still a lot of weapons. But uh, I just don't think it's enough to, to get the job done here. So uh, I got the Panthers in this matchup. Uh, next, we'll move on to a game that I'm really excited for, uh, and that's uh, Houston at Baltimore. And uh, this is going to be a big game. Both teams have good mobile quarterbacks. They both got good pass coverages. They're you know both doing well this year, looking like they're going to make the playoffs. Well, I, I think the Ravens do for sure, um, but Houston's looking like they're definitely going to make it as well. Probably going to win the division if or, or you know if not be a wild card team. Um, and I'm personally, as a Colts fan, hoping that the Ravens win this game, and I think they will playing at home. Um, you know, I think they are on a, they've got a lot of momentum coming off their win against the Patriots here. I think another big win against Houston would indicate that, you know, they are the team in the AFC to be, uh, you know, messed with. Um, and that the and I think they're fighting right now for that number one seed and trying to make the, the playoffs go through Baltimore. And I think that... Uh, 
both teams are good here, but I think the and they're both good as far as pass coverage goes, and they're both good against stopping the run here. But I think um, the 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 key difference here is they the the Houston defense gives up more touchdowns, you know, than the than the Ravens do. So even though they don't give up, they give up about the same as far as yards go and completion percentage, yards per play, things like that. But as far as the touchdowns go, and, and when looking at the film. You've got to give the the edge here to to Baltimore, I think, especially playing at home. Uh, so next we'll move up to a, another game. Uh, this will be the second time they played in three weeks, and that's the Arizona Cardinals at the San Francisco 49ers. Um, you know, the, the Cardinals played them tough in Arizona. It's a Thursday night game, uh, which I think sometimes key, especially because San Fran hadn't come off a loss, so, you know, chips on their shoulders every week. Not they've had that loss. I think that, you know, that I think that's actually good for a team. Um, I think San Fran plays well today against the Cardinals. The Cardinals have one of the worst defenses in the NFL. Uh, I think you've given Shanahan time to see what the Cardinals like to do, both on offense and defense, but especially on defense. And the Cardinals have one of the worst defenses in the, in the NFL. So um, I think that only helps uh, San Francisco. Uh, but we'll see what Cliff Kingsbury's got up his sleeve. You know, maybe he can do something here, but against a great pass rush and great pass coverage and great running defense to San Fran that just stacked all around on defense. I think they're going to struggle today. So uh, I got San Francisco in that matchup. Uh, next, we've got the New England Patriots at the Philadelphia Eagles. Uh, this this is a game that's going to be interesting. The Philly, the Phil, uh, Philadelphia Eagles are 5-4, and four, so this is going to be a huge win for them if they can get it to move to 6-4 and four and keep their playoff hopes alive. But... Uh, New England's coming off a loss. Bill Belichick and Tom Brady coming off a loss. That's that's not a team. You know, that's not a team you want to face when they're coming off a loss because they usually do pretty well. They got something to prove. Uh, they don't lose very many games in general, but especially not two in a row. So I think uh, I I got to go with New England in this one. I think they win this one, um, even though it's on the road. Uh, I, I don't even think it matters to, to look at too many things. You know, I think there could be a lot of matchups that might be in Philly's favor. But I also think that uh, Bill Belichick and Brady hate the Eagles and Doug Peterson after losing to them in the, the Super Bowl. So um, I'm going to go with the Patriots in this one, and I think it's pretty simple to understand why. I don't even think you have to analyze or look at matchups because even if there isn't a matchup to expose or even if there was one, uh, Bill Belichick always does an amazing job at adjusting. So anything I would – that would come out of my mouth would probably just look stupid. <laughs> so next you've got the uh, Cincinnati Bengals who are winless against the Oakland Raiders. And again, I think the Bengals need to reconsider what they're doing. I don't know if their plan was to long-term stay with Ryan Finley or if they would have tried to draft Tua with that first overall pick if they had not won a single game this year. Um, but I think that that's, uh, that's got to change now and they got to really see what they've got in Finley. Um, they got to, you know, see what he's capable of, which I think is going to be tough. Um, you know, the, the Raiders have a bad defense, to be completely honest, especially passing defense. But I think against a rookie quarterback and Ryan Finley, I think they're going to be able to look a little bit better. Uh, and ultimately, Cincinnati has zero pass rush. They've got some of the worst sacks, least sacks in the league. And they've got one of the worst, they've got actually the worst rushing defense in the league. And so when you have a good running back in, in Josh Jacobs for Oakland and a good quarterback in Derek Carr and a good play caller in John Gruden and you're playing at home, uh, I think that just sets you up for... And, and a good offensive line. I think that just sets you up for success. And I think you can't, if you're going to let them run the ball and have Derek Carr have a lot of time to throw, you're going to get picked apart today, especially when there's no noise. Uh, so I've got the, the Oakland Raiders in this game. Uh, next up, we've got the Sunday night game, uh, and that is going to be the Chicago Bears at the Los Angeles Rams. Uh, I got to go with the Rams in this one. They've looked pretty inconsistent this year. Goff has looked questionable. Um, so is Trubisky, though. I think a lot of people want to put the blame on Trubisky, and he definitely deserves some, but the reality is the whole team for the Bears is bad. That offensive line just blows assignments every play. It's insane. Um, and then the Rams, uh, they they got the better coach, in my opinion. Um, I, I don't even understand some of the concepts and what the Bears are doing or what their identity is, and I think that the Rams will be able to do a good job of generating pressure on Mitch Trubisky today, forcing him to think quick, and uh, the Bears aren't running the ball through David Montgomery like they should, and and because of that, uh, I think they'll they're gonna lose this game. Their their only way to win it is if they do uh, force pressure on on Jared Goff and force some turnovers, and if they can run the ball on them. So, uh, but I think because they're playing uh, in Los Angeles, uh, I I gotta give the edge here to to the Rams.
And uh, finally, we're going to look at the Monday night game, which is the Chiefs and the Chargers. And, uh, you know, this is another tough one to predict because the Chiefs have lost some games that they probably shouldn't have lost. Um, but, again, Patrick Mahomes was hurt and coming back uh, in a game. And But but the Chargers, you know, they, they've looked like they were on a little roll, but then they lose the, they lose games. They're just so inconsistent. It's hard to really figure out what they're going to do week to week. Uh, even though they're at home, that really doesn't give them <laughs> – that. that's the one – team where I think the home field advantage thing goes out the window because there might be just as many Chiefs fans there tomorrow as Chargers fans. Uh, so I think, uh, and I've said this before, they should have been the ones to move to, to Vegas and keep the, the Raiders in Los Angeles where they're loved, but just that didn't make sense to me ever. But anyways, uh, but ultimately I've got the Chiefs in this game. I got Andy Reid and Patrick Mahomes. I think this is a game they definitely need to win to prove that they are still a threat in the AFC uh, to try to get that second seed and try to get a first round bye. Um, so, uh, I got the chiefs in this game. Um, you know, we'll see if Bosa and them can get pressure on the chiefs, but, uh, I think ultimately, again, I, I some of the matchups that you look at here is Tyree kill and the ability to, to blow past some of the, the defenders there. And then you look at the fact that uh, we'll have to see how, how Damian Williams is, you know, LaShawn McCoy was a scratch last week. Uh, Damian Williams hasn't been a hundred percent healthy. Uh, so if they can do a good job of stopping the run and allowing Bosa to try to tee off on Mahomes, they might have a shot. But ultimately, you know, I think that the play calling is is too good, um, and I think that you know the Chargers consistently have have shown that they're they they. I mean, Philip Rivers has turned the ball over so many. I mean. I think they've got 16 turnovers. Let me see. Uh, let me just look at it really quick. Yeah, they've got 16 turnovers on offense. I mean, you know, they're one of the top eight teams as far as turning the balls over, and 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 you can't do that. Uh, so, um, but we'll we'll see. I mean, ultimately, if they, I think the the key for the Chargers will have to be stopping the run, getting getting pass or pass rush uh, pressure on Patrick Mahomes and running the football through Melvin Gordon and Austin Eckler against that weak run defense for the Chiefs. But uh, I've got the Chiefs in this one. So um, that'll do it. Those are uh, all the matchups for week 11 in the NFL. Uh, really excited to go uh, check these games out and start watching them. And I uh, hope you guys enjoyed the segment for today. If you did, please uh, like and subscribe to us. Check us out. We're on, you know, uh, Apple Podcasts. We're on Spotify. We're on YouTube. We're the buffo- uh, follow us on Instagram. We are the Buffoons Sports Talk. Uh, again, we we just absolutely love talking sports. It's one of our favorite things. We follow, you know, football, baseball, basketball, UFC, uh, you know, all mixed martial arts, boxing, golf. Uh, even hockey, NASCAR. So, you know, college football, college sports, we love talking it. Um, we figure there are so many other buffoons or fools on TV uh, that get to do this for a living and get paid a lot to do it that I have absolutely no idea what they're talking about. Or they do and they just say absolutely ridiculous things to get people to tune in. That uh, if you're looking for some good breakdown and some good content where we aren't just making absolutely rabbit statements, check us out. Uh, give us a Give us a follow. Tell your friends about it. And, uh, yeah, we will see you next week for another episode of the Sunday Rundown. Take it away, guys.